Hello, I'm Camilia and this is Kini News. A Bersatu leader has claimed that the government is targeting and hounding Anwar's political opponents. They also claimed the government was abusing its powers and called on them to stop. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has been accused of abusing the powers of enforcement agencies to hound his opponents, with the latest involving Putrajaya MP Radzi Jidin. In a statement, Bersatu Legal Bureau Deputy Chief Sasha Laina Abdulatif said Radzi's ordeal began on Tuesday in Parliament when Anwar accused him of corruption. Sasha said what followed was the spreading of messages online claiming Radzi was involved in corruption concerning books for preschoolers, among others. She also pointed out that it was too much of a coincidence that two days later, the MACC arrested the person who served as political secretary to Radzi when he was education minister. Sasha said that the chronology was noteworthy and claimed that it suggests a systematic targeting and hounding of the opponents of the prime minister and the ruling coalition by law enforcement agencies. Elaborating, she said it is irrational Unrealistic and laughable to suggest that the MACC investigation against Radzi is unconnected with the spat with the PM in Parliament last Tuesday. Sasha also accused the Anwar-led administration of initiating criminal investigations against opposition figures in order to distract the public from the prosecutor's decision to withdraw their case against Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. She urged the government to stop what she claimed were intimidation and fabrications against opposition MPs and going after non-aligned parties. She added that Anwar and his government must focus on the troubles and plights of the Rakyat and create policies to improve the Rakyat's livelihoods, instead of engaging in alleged unlawful plots against the opposition. It was previously reported that Radzi's former political secretary is under remand, which expires tomorrow. He was allegedly investigated over an 80 million ringgit school book contract. Meanwhile, Radzi, in a statement, said he and his wife were not involved with the printing of books nor the companies mentioned in the online messages accusing him of impropriety. Barikata National will roll out the big guns in Plangai next week. Tuan Ibrahim revealed that Hadi, Mahathir and Muhyiddin will be among those joining their campaign from next Tuesday. Past Deputy President Tuan Ibrahim Tuan Man has revealed that past President Abdul Hadi Awang will join the campaign for the Palangai by-election from next Tuesday onwards. Following this, he said Hadi and former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir Muhammad will attend a grand finale Chirama event with the date yet to be determined. Tuan Ibrahim added that PN Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin, Slangor PN Chief Azmin Ali, and PN Secretary General Hamza Zainuddin will be joining the campaign on October 3rd. Hadi and Mahathir were once bitter rivals. However, the duo has become increasingly closer, with Mahathir currently serving as an advisor to the four state governments run by PAS, otherwise known as SG4. Palangai is a rural constituency with three large Felda settlements in Pahang. In 2022, BN retained the seat in a convincing manner, while PN came in at a respectable second place. Three days into the campaign, the pace has been slow so far. Tuan Ibrahim's drama last night saw a very small crowd, likely due to him being the only national-level figure speaking. Several speakers at the trauma urged voters not to retain the BN candidate because AMNO was now allied with Pakatan Harapan and DAP. Fahmi will be having a briefing with the MCMC to find out what transpired between them and online portal Malaysia Now. He said he had just returned from overseas and was not clear on what happened between the two. Communications and Digital Minister Fami Fadzil has encouraged the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission to engage more with all organizations. This came after a group of veteran media professionals criticized the MCMC over their demand for online news portal Malaysia Now amend or withdraw its article on a commotion that broke out in the Dewan Rakyat last Tuesday. When quizzed on the matter, Fahmi said he just returned from overseas and was not clear on what happened between MCMC and Malaysia Now. 
He said he appreciated and valued the feedback that has been given by the members of the media and will attend a briefing by the MCMC to understand what transpired as well as discuss how to ensure that things can be better. However, he believes whatever actions taken by MCMC will be within the boundaries of the law. He stressed that he respects the views of journalists and that freedom of the press is very important to the government, but said that there is also a need for the media to be factually correct in their reporting. Uh, freedom of the press is something which is uh, very important for the government. Um, at the same time, um, being factually correct also is very important. Uh, there were some public complaints that were uh, extended to me, uh, but not only to myself, um, with regards to some reporting that was done. Uh, that's why, for the Deputy Minister and myself, we believe that uh, perhaps a uh, Malaysian Media Council would be a, a very good avenue to uh, mitigate, to discuss, and to resolve a number of these issues. The article by Malaysia Now was on the rowdy exchange between government and opposition lawmakers, which led to Putrajaya MP Radzi Jidin being removed from the Dewan Rakyat. The MCMC previously justified its demands to Malaysia Now by saying the article had reported the proceedings out of context with the intent to spread hatred or incite provocation. We are often faced with nutrient deficiency needed for our body. This is why I choose g -Sure. Jishwar is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink that helps to improve the immune system and strengthen our bodies. It has to be Good Morning Jishwar. Sanusi confirmed today that he has given his statement to the MACC on the issue of REE mining in the state. Kada Menteri Besar Muhammad Sanusi Madnor has given his statement to the MACC regarding the allegations of corruption and abuse of power in the rare earth elements mining issue in the state. Sanusi told reporters after the Kedah State Assembly sitting today that he met with MACC officials over a week ago to give his statement. Without disclosing the location where the statement was recorded, he said he was only asked four questions. In July, the media reported that 10 state executive council members were called to give statements to the MACC to assist in the REE case investigation. It was also previously reported that a senior officer of the Kedah Menteri Besar Incorporated and a woman who is a director of a company were arrested by the MACC to assist in the investigation of a corruption case of more than 13 million ringgit and abuse of power involving the REE mining issue. Yesterday, Home Minister Saifuddin Nasudion Ismail said more suspects will be charged with trespassing in forest reserves in Sikh linked to the alleged theft. His statement came after reports that nine individuals, including five foreign citizens, were arrested and charged in the Baling Session Court today with trespassing into a forest reserve area. Police have confirmed that the nine individuals are also suspected of carrying out REE exploration. Saifuddin said the arrests and subsequent charges in court prove that theft did occur. He also implied that the state government and agencies were involved in the case. Speaking of statements, Howard Lee is expected to have his statement recorded by the police tomorrow. This is over the issue of a video where he had given his own interpretation on a verse from the Quran. Police are expected to record Ipo Timor MP Howard Lee's statement tomorrow over his alleged attempt at making his own interpretations of verses from the Quran. Lee told Utusan that he would willingly cooperate with the police when giving his statement tomorrow, scheduled for around 3 p.m. Lee is currently returning from the United States as part of Malaysia's delegation to the 78th United Nations General Assembly. On September 22, the police launched an investigation against Lee, following reports lodged over one of his TikTok videos where he was accused of insulting Islam by allegedly citing a verse from the Quran. Yesterday, Bukiraman Criminal Investigation Department Director Muhammad Shuali Muhammad Zain confirmed that Lee's statement would be taken as soon as he returned to Malaysia. Meanwhile, Deputy Inspector General of Police Ayub Khan Maidin Piche said that Lee would be investigated under Section 505 of the Penal Code and Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act. 
Lee had come under fire after he quoted the Quranic verse and related it to PASA's efforts against the current government. Following that, Kadah Mantri Basar Mohamad Sanusi Batnoor used the incident as material for the ongoing Plangai by election campaign. The past leader said Lee's use of the Quranic passage was a sign of growing liberalism and urged voters to reject the BN candidate who is allied with DAP. We Kasyong has retained his post as MCA president. We has been the MCA president since 2018. This will be his second term. Wee Ka Siong has successfully defended his post as MCA president for a second term. We obtained 569 out of 605 electoral votes, leaving his contender Tan Chong Seng far behind in the straight fight for the party's number one post. Tan, who is a former Central Committee member, only secured 11 votes. When commenting on his re-election victory last night, we thanked the delegates and promised to do his best to help the party to improve its reputation and to work together with the new team for MCA to return to its glory days. He also reminded the newly elected leaders to work hard for the party. We has been MCA president since 2018. This will be his second term helming the party. His term was originally set to expire in 2021. However, in 2019, MCA amended its party constitution so that party elections are only held six months after each general election. Meanwhile, party deputy president Ma Han Soon retained his post unchallenged and incumbent Wong Yu Fung defended her post as Wanita MCA chief. Yong Peng, assembly person Ling Tian Soon was elected to be the party youth chief. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.